How many people understood Bitcoin? Yes. And uh, I think we are not more than, or circa in the magnitude of 100k, no more. It is 0.00125%. In the Bitcoin world, there is so many romantic uh, utopia that cannot be true. So an ETF is uh, a path that we should go through in order to reach Bitcoin adoption. Bitcoin has already won. Everyone who will join now will be mostly for number go up. Till the Bitcoin ETF in the financial world, Bitcoin was seen like sitting at the children table. What happens when Apple encounters Bitcoin? We should not trade Bitcoin because in the short term, he does what he wants, he wants, and no one knows. We will assist at a kind of a Bitcoin rush, similar to the gold rush 150 years ago in California, but it will be much more faster. I have 100%, 103% in Bitcoin okay. right now. I had 120%. I'm okay. working my way down. My goal is 95%. Okay. <laughs> Once you don't have any asset uh, and you live paycheck to paycheck, you get hit by inflation completely because very likely your paycheck didn't increase as much as inflation. Hi Alessandro, how are you doing? My first ever podcast uh, guest and he's the first one to return on the podcast. Uh, welcome. Hi Robin, thanks to have me here and also for me it's the first podcast, the first episode I do uh, in person, all the other was online. So great to see you and to meet you in person in Prague. Yeah, my, my first ever in-person podcast was also like just two days ago. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a way better feeling. It's like yes. once you get used to it, like you... You really have a better connection. Uh, remote, it's just not the same thing. And I love to do it uh, in person. And I would actually like to take that opportunity. We recorded on, I think, 28th of November last year. And I looked it up today. The price went up 75% since then. Uh, we, had, we had the ETF in between. We had the halving in between. How was the time? How did you see the, the last half year for you? Yes, it was really exciting. So as you know, I was a big advocate of a Bitcoin ETF. Since October, I started to focus on the importance of the ETFs. And after a few weeks, we saw the price going down. There were many people saying, OK, it's a failure. The ETF launch was not good. It's not so important. And then we saw Bitcoin going to 65, 70K, mostly due to the ETFs. Also breaking the previous cycle where... Uh, the, the previous ITH was broken six months after the halving. The, in this cycle, was the first time that it was broken before the halving. So, for me, is uh, is the start of the second era of Bitcoin. The first era was started, uh, finished the 9th of June of January 2024, and started the 3rd of January 2009. Mm. And the second era started the 10th of January. We saw only the apex, the cusp of the iceberg. The real capital uh, is yet to come. But it's not coming in the next years. I assume it's coming in the next uh, in next months from Q3 2024 to Q2 2025. We will see the real effect. That's interesting. How, how do you define those eras uh, when you have like the first, I don't know, what was it, 15 years? It's like for yes. you the first era. Uh, do you have names for those eras? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is uh, the, let's say, I could call uh, the institutional era. Uh, also, I have a, I started a recently a podcast as Bitcoin as a store of value, mm -hmm. uh, because for me, uh, the biggest narrative, the narrative that matters the most is uh, Bitcoin as a store of value, mm -hmm. especially for the people who are joining from now on. And uh, for having, having the ETF is really important for the legitimacy of the asset. We need, uh, uh, Bitcoin doesn't need anyone. But in order to have global adoption for the common people, we need the financial uh, world in Bitcoin and recommending Bitcoin. And they can join Bitcoin only with an ETF. There are pension funds, institutions, uh, insurance funds. They, will, they cannot enter a Bitcoin world without an ETF. Is uh, I, I hear it a lot, and and there's like t always two sides to the stories. And I I just love when Bitcoin gets adopt adopted. Like yes. I don't care who adopts Bitcoin, and I don't see anyone who is adopting Bitcoin as an enemy because I know Bitcoin is stable and resilient enough to uh, ensure yes. any attack. So even if there's like uh, an executive order six uh, one or two, uh, what was with the gold thing? Uh, I don't. Even if this comes, Bitcoin will survive and thrive in the, in the future. Maybe there are some short-term struggles with that. And I don't think that that will happen. Uh, but do, do you see, did you ever uh, say like, oh, it could be a risk that uh, so many Bitcoins are centralized at Coinbase? <laughs> ah, yes, uh, for sure. Okay. There are also some drawbacks. Um, yeah, uh, it, could be a, it could be a risk, but I see also a, a low risk because... Um, 
firstly, there are not so many bitcoins. Also, they can have 500k or 1 million bitcoin, and in total, there are 20 million bitcoin. Yeah. And uh, I see also as a phase. So at the beginning, uh, maybe everyone would go to Coinbase. For example, Fidelity. Fidelity is now having uh, self custody, and maybe also they will choose uh, other um, other um, exchange or other exchange for uh, storing bitcoin. And also, I think. For Coinbase, there is no really. There are also other technical risk of uh, printing more Bitcoin, uh, or for people were saying uh, uh, BlackRock can fork uh, Bitcoin. But in reality, I think what BlackRock want to do is uh, make money, and there was a demand of an institution who wanted to be exposed on Bitcoin, uh, and they could not. So BlackRock created this service. Is paying, uh, is asking for a fee. People are happy to pay a fee. That also, this fee is like 0.3 percent per year, so it's very low. Uh, and uh, asking money for fee. So, also the higher the price is, is for BlackRock, the better it is because they make more money in fees. So I think there is, a, there could be some technical risk, but the likelihood is very remote, and they are not incentivized. Also, which is the incentive of BlackRock to have more Bitcoin than what they declare or to? Uh, sell more Bitcoin of what they have to have like paper Bitcoin. They are very audited and they will not risk the reputation of 10 trillion uh, dollars for uh, 100 billion maybe assets. So. Yeah, and, and, and I had uh, the podcast with Marcus Hale and he even made the argument that the ETF is decentralizing Bitcoin because it's another player in the game. It's not only ah, yes. uh, uh, self-custody people. Like, it, like there's another player now in the game And he talked about that, like, I think, like 10, 15 minutes <laughs> about that po point. But uh, that's an interesting uh, comparison. Sure. Uh, okay, yes. See, see it like that. And it's also, for me, the, maybe the biggest thing is, uh, to, one is the asset is legitimate. For, not for us. We, we, should, we should be aware that we are in a bumble. Uh, also, people going to the conference, people listening to podcasts. And so far, uh, it's a small group of Bitcoiners. We are really convinced, but we are in a small, a small group compared to the global world. And because most of the people, they don't see us as such a legitimate, so too much volatility. Still, they were saying used by criminals uh, and, and so on. And no intrinsic value. Now we are seeing also with the ETF... Uh, Even the people remain against some, so some move from against to in favor, some from against to neutral. But even the same people who are against, they are they softened their opinion. They are not saying, "Oh no, Bitcoin is bad; uh, it's used by criminals." You you hear much less now that is more legitimate. So that's the first, and second, uh, we should cope. Uh, I think in the Bitcoin world there is so many romantic uh, utopia, yes, that cannot be true. It will never happen that Bitcoin went spread because people use uh, as a medium of exchange in self-custody. How I see Bitcoin adoption will be, firstly, it will be store of value. And to have the common people a store of value, meaning the father of a family of two kids, uh, everyone storing uh, 10, 20, 30 percent of their savings in Bitcoin can happen only if the financial world is telling them that Bitcoin is a store of value. Mm. And for the financial world to tell them, they need an ETF. So an ETF is uh, um, ob uh, ob obliged, like uh, um, a path that we should go through in order to reach Bitcoin adoption. Um, I would not see the common person, if we go now in Prague or in any city and we ask the people to store 10, 20, 30 percent, they will think if it is us recommending They will say no. You're like, or you're crazy. You're through. You're like risk. Even if it's the opposite, it will happen when the financial world will tell. Okay, 10 percent, 20 percent in Bitcoin is a, in a is a, a standard position in a balanced portfolio. And uh, you also chose the name for your podcast uh, that is on X Spaces Live and also then on YouTube uh, uh, the recording. Um, which is really cool also the, the format that you are doing it I never saw it uh, done uh, yes. like that live recorded on to the spaces and then uh, like uh, I really love that you brought something new into the space um, but you chose the name Bitcoin as a store of value yes uh, and we have those cycles like first the uh, Bitcoin was just like collector's item some nerds uh, bought it so it was like getting uh, bigger and bigger adopted and now we're in the I guess longest and biggest phase of them yes. all is the store of value phase. But once everyone adopts it as their financial energy, I have 100% uh, 
103% in, in Bitcoin okay. right now. <laughs> so <laughs> risky. <laughs> I, I had 120%. Okay. I'm working my way down. My goal is 95%. Okay. <laughs> But, but I don't want to sell Bitcoin, so I have to stack up. Just, uh, just, okay, okay, yes. You have to get cash <laughs> yeah, when yeah, you yeah, reach 95%. Yeah, I, I, have, I have to get rid of my credits and everything to get, <laughs> to, get to the 95%. Uh, it's, I have a long time horizon. I have no, no, no rush for that. And there's no risk for for, for me in that. Uh, because even if the yes. price of Bitcoin goes to zero, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but the, the way I wanted to go is like, when everybody adopts the main store of value, they are like 80% in Bitcoin, 90% in Bitcoin, even 50% in Bitcoin. They might want to spend it at some yeah, point. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and it's then the next step and the next era, uh, the, the medium of exchange era. Would you rename also your podcast? Then? <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, I think uh, definitely Bitcoin has all the potential to become a global medium of exchange. And um, it will be the main narrative, but I think from a bit 2032, 35, not, not earlier, we will need some years before people move. Now there will be a, a consensus of one, three percent, because we should not forget 2022, we had Celsius, BlockFi, FTX, Bitcoin, and unfortunately, crypto world harming once again Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is resi uh, resilient, so it survived uh, brilliantly. But still, in 2022, two years ago, I think also you, any Bitcoiners, we almost stopped to discuss Bitcoin. No, no one was asking about Bitcoin because regardless what we said, it moved from 69 to 17K. So our um, uh, potential to educate on Bitcoin was quite low. Then uh, Bitcoin came up. It moved to 25,000. There was also the big cases of uh, some banks in California who were uh, went bankrupt and Bitcoin moved as a store of value. And then there was the ETF. Uh, so now is people are seeing it once again as a store of value. For me, on uh, store of value, Bitcoin has already won. As we, many, bit, I hear also in a, in a podcast uh, for many who we invite in the podcast, there is no debate. In fact, that's why I'm not um, willing to discuss uh, to debate on Bitcoin as a store of value with people who read maybe two articles and they're skeptical on Bitcoins. No, yeah. firstly, they need to study, they need to spend a lot of hours, and then we can discuss about Bitcoin. But also, there is no alignment on uh, if it is not or, or a good or bad store of value. He already won, and we are waiting the world uh, to uh, realize it. For medium of exchange, yes, for the monetization of the asset, once you reach the global store of value, he has a, bigger, a very good chance to become global medium of exchange. I am not as sure that it will become the global medium of exchange. If I have to bet, I would say yes. Also because uh, considering macroeconomics, we can discuss maybe later on, uh, they will print money. They will keep printing money because it's the only way to keep the system uh, running. So at one point, I assume the dollars will have such high inflation that people start to discuss, start to say, okay, with um, 8, 10, 12, 15%, you cannot cope many years with 12, 15% inflation like, because the low and middle low class will be completely wrecked. So once you reach a store of value, it can be, it has the potential to become a medium of exchange, but we will know more once you reach a store of value. And maybe I will change my, at that point when it's everyone has a fifth, uh, maybe 80 is a bit too extreme for us, but even 30%, 50% in Bitcoin, imagine the common people having 30% in savings in Bitcoin will be a huge win for all. And you also mentioned that in our first podcast that you have to spend, was it 100 hours or 1,000 hours? That no, uh, I, yes, I know. One, okay, 1,000 I think is only for, for us, for people who are really interested. Um, I say 100 hours for a good basic understanding. But uh, personally, I would say I would not debate on Bitcoin as store of value with whoever didn't spend less, uh, didn't spend at least 250 hours on Bitcoin because I am not willing to waste time to explain all the misconceptions there are in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is hard. Uh, also, one error that we are doing that is easy to understand. It's not easy to understand. You need maybe easy, maybe to grasp, especially the, the current situation. You see that. Uh, with the higher inflation, people are grasping. But to really to understand Bitcoin, uh, it takes time. Each of us took uh, maybe years or m uh, months, but generally years, many hundreds of hours, um, many hours or hundreds in order to reach this position. Now we are, we say, okay, 
it, it, it works. Uh, it's clear, the store of value. But we should not forget how much time we spend in order to understand this. Uh, so I always say we can uh, bring, uh, you, they say you can bring the horse to the water, but you cannot make him drink. So also Michael Saylor said we cannot make people think, but we can make people think about something. So we can make people um, thinking about the economy, what is wrong with inflation, what is scarce, the importance of scarcity, the history of money. But then they should spend time at home, alone, and study. And this is what most majority of people are not doing. Will they ever, like, I think that most people will never really understand Bitcoin. It's just yes. a really small minority. Uh, and the rest will just buy it because it's yes. so obvious. Definitely. Uh, it's, uh, one, so, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto says it's bloody hard to explain Bitcoin because it's nothing related to it. And every time when there is something new, most of the people are not able to get because our human brain brain is really good in uh, having incremental um, improvements. That's why also people in finance are not getting Bitcoin. They are very great in maybe in, they are very ex expert on the financial world, bond, stock, uh, real estate. And for incremental uh, Uh, improvements, they are the best to grasp it. But when it is a disruptive technology, a completely different technology, it's very, it's even harder for those who live in that world. And uh, I think the biggest, comp the most suitable comparison is with the internet. In the 90s, uh, only few people understood the internet. And they were the people who were really studying the internet. Now, if we go around here at the conference and we ask uh, which is the biggest innovation of the last 30 years, everyone will say, or most everyone, internet without even knowing. Mm -hmm. So in 20 years, our children, when our children will be maybe 20, 25, 20 years old, our future children, <laughs> um, at that time, we ask which is the biggest innovation of the last 30 years, people will reply Bitcoin without knowing how it works. Also because I really, it's not that I am an expert on internet, I use every day, but uh, I know the value, but I don't know how it works. The difference is uh, to be an early adopter, so you should understand it. Uh, if you want to be a lag uh, to, under, to adopt once uh, everyone is adopting it, uh, then uh, it will be, there will be no advantage, not a big advantage anymore. So they, many people will buy it when it's safe, when the financial world will say, yes, go 20% in Bitcoin, there will be much less risk or at least the perceived risk because the real risk in bitcoin i assume is quite low the only problem is the price will be maybe one million so <laughs> and they miss the, the big bull run <laughs> is uh how, how do you see uh self-custody in that because for me it's really there are two sides in me uh the one side is saying oh no uh, bitcoin will only be self-custody for a really small portion of people then there's also the the thing where when you have Bitcoin self-custody, the transaction fees will be really expensive. Uh, and uh, and we, we, I talked with many people around about that concept yesterday. Like uh, now, uh, maybe what's the average uh, transaction on, on the base layer of Bitcoin? I don't know, maybe 20 euros, maybe 100 euros, maybe uh, uh, 1,000 euros. But in, in 10 years, it will be 10x, 100x, okay, yes. uh, 20x of that uh, in, in, in euro terms. Maybe like Satoshi terms it will be interesting how it, it goes from there. Uh, but not everyone will be even able to transact on a base layer because it will be uh, bloody hard and, and really... <laughs> yes, it also will take time it because if you have seven uh, transactions per second... So and and, yes. and it, it's just like, uh, it will be expensive. Yeah, also, yes. Uh, that, that, that's the, the main thing. How do you see uh, a world? And then, oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, and then there's the other side to it, where I'm like, okay, but how many? Like when we started in the beginning of the email thing, everyone was saying like everyone has to run his own email server, everyone will have his own email server. But now everyone has like Gmail and, and uh, yes, all those centralized yes. uh, things. Do you think it will be like similar that with with the internet adoption, where we centralize a lot uh, and only hardcore freedom loving uh, bitcoiners are uh, on the self custody level uh, on on bitcoin maybe on a second layer self custody and 
99% or 99.9% are on, on like just on exchange or something like that? Maybe less than 99%, but for sure uh, the vast majority. So I think also self, uh, important that Bitcoin has the option of self-custody and whoever wants to do self-custody can do. Uh, for me, also, I have my I don't div uh, my diversification is not on the stocks, uh, bonds. Uh, it's only Bitcoin, but I also diversify in Bitcoin. So I have also some uh, in self custody and a portion also in uh, custody. It's like my no, uh, I don't want to have all risk in one. So better to diversify. What I see in the future, firstly, the class from 2024 is completely different from the class of 2013, 15. Everyone who had a very great, a great sensibility on cyberpunk, freedom, uh, sovereign individual is already in Bitcoin. So everyone who will join now will be mostly for number go up. And uh, many of them will not want to learn self-custody because it's also in the panel yesterday, self-custody versus ETF, they were saying, Uh, Self-custody is simple, but then you have to have the responsibility. You, you need to be responsible and not everyone wants to be responsible of, the, of their money. What I see in the future, maybe not only the cyberpunk people really for self-custody, there will be them plus uh, some more because uh, once Bitcoin is medium of exchange uh, and it will be more uh, spread, then also for Austrian School of Economics, when there will be more demand, more demand then also technology will advance more. So there will be easier self-custody solution. So there will be more people. But still, uh, the vast majority will use um, uh, um, custodial, I will call Bitcoin banks, that are kind of institutions that at the moment don't exist yet. What I see in also uh, Hal Finney were saying, no, we will need Bitcoin banks because uh, it cannot be that everyone will self-custody, will have no, K no KYC transaction. But I see this uh, institution bet way better than banks. Firstly, they will not be fractional reserve banking because Bitcoin, you cannot print more. And uh, secondly, they should give loan, credit loan, only if savers block this Bitcoin uh, in their bank. So the whole uh, Bitcoin will give the incentives to the bank to behave more, um, in a way to have hard money. So the whole system uh, will improve. And the biggest, I think the biggest uh, change of Bitcoin uh, will not be that uh, some people will have Bitcoin in self-custody. This is also a change, but the biggest will be the, to put the whole monetary system in a Bitcoin standard without fractional reserve banking and with uh, loans backed by saving. This is the most important thing. Uh, if we have this, then our economy and our uh, civilization will thrive. Uh, amazing. And... Uh, when we come to, to, to hardware wallets, like even now, yesterday Matic Sack, the treasurer CEO, made a presentation uh, and he w brought up one statistics that I was completely shocked. Okay, interesting. Uh, he said only 2% of Bitcoiners right now are having self custody hardware wallet. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And, and I'm like, Solely, 2%, 2 only. right now. Now, okay, right imagine now. the future. Okay, yes. And I'm like, Imagine the future. It doesn't get better with better technology and it's easier to use and maybe like self-custody. Uh, um, um, Sena talked about on the podcast a little bit. Like, he's like, what happens when Apple encounters Bitcoin? And then they're thinking like, oh, I could, I, I want my users to self-custody their Bitcoin. I want them to have self-custody devices, multi-signature devices on my, on their Apple devices. There's an Apple Watch, there's an iPad, there is a MacBook. Uh, there's an iPhone. There are like four devices. Most Apple users have more than one yeah, Apple device. I see. I have four. <laughs> <laughs> And you have four devices. You could have made a four multi-signature wallet with your Apple yeah. devices. So like, why, why not do, do, do that? And, and maybe, maybe that's the future where we like, we just have like, oh, let's, let's bring, uh, the Apple Watch has to touch the iPhone and then you lock your, your Bitcoin, something like that. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, That could be a, could be an option. Interesting, this uh, percentage of 2%. Yeah. But I think also we sh people are saying how many address uh, they are in, uh, in the Bitcoin. And uh, on this side, uh, I don't think we need to only judge how many addresses we have in, in Bitcoin to judge the adoption. Because if a person in the West world has uh, 100, dollars in, 100 euro or dollars in Bitcoin, it's not really in the Bitcoin world. Yes, he has some Bitcoin... Uh, um, I think for adoption, uh, also discussing with Croesus, uh, once you're having like 5% of your savings in Bitcoin, uh, or maybe let's say in the worst world, uh, 10K, 10,000 euro, 
uh, then it's like when uh, you can this, you can in, incorporate this person in Bitcoin adoption because uh, many I am sure many they heard maybe in a um, in a meeting with friends uh, or in a wedding from someone and then they open an account and they have fifty dollars fifty euro and they to- don't touch anymore. I don't really consider this as a Bitcoin adoption. Oh, so like even if it's really like because it's like really interesting to like how many Bitcoiners are there. Yes, it's an impossible uh, yeah, thing to true. answer because there are address, Bitcoin addresses where million users are on there because uh, yes. it's like an exchange or something like that, uh, and then there are uh, users they are not on an exchange but they have like ten or twenty or addresses. fifty addresses yes, for yes. for their Bitcoin. Uh, what's your best guess? How many Bitcoiners are we? In the world, in the uh, world, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe so. Assuming five five percent uh, f- for a location, maybe five percent or ten k, and maybe one million in the world. Yeah. One million. Uh, but uh, I'm more curious of how many people understood Bitcoin, yes. and uh, I think we are not more than or circa in the magnitude of one hundred k. No more. It is zero point zero zero one two seven five percent of people who can really discuss, like we are discussing as civilization, future of society, um, hard, uh, hard money, scarcity, people who can discuss this level, I don't think we are more than 100k. And we discussed that in the, our first podcast and I brought oh. it, up, I don't know if I brought it up after the recording or oh. we brought it up actually in the recording. I have a list on ah, Twitter yes. yeah, yes, with, uh, Bitcoiners and I collect them. Like I, when I see a Bitcoiner, I just add them. Uh, and I have uh, now a little bit more than there. I think back then I had like 150 people. Yes, you remember. And now I have like two, 300 in there. So I got to know more people. More people came into the Bitcoin yes. space. Uh, but I'm like, I pretty know a lot of people. I, I really search through uh, Twitter and see like huh. oh, who is in there. And, and I put them in like, I really search hard. I'm not it's probably higher than that. I don't get everyone. Okay. But I think I have a good, 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 good grasp uh, yes. of like actual Bitcoiners, like yeah, no yes. crypto people. When yeah, there's yes. like Web three in their in their bio, or something, I <laughs> don't NFTs, add them. Yes. NFTs, I don't add them. <laughs> but it's not a lot of people. And uh, which is your uh, threshold? How many followers? I I uh, delimited the threshold down. Okay. So I have now like ten thousand followers and down because okay. even people with, with three, a thousand yes. followers or sure, three hundred uh, followers. Uh, even them uh, have nice tweets and they might have uh, futures like before I had the threshold of a 3,000 followers. Yes, yeah, makes sense. So like under uh, 10,000 followers, I have like 150, 600, like... You mean like, above, above like, 10,000? Uh, no, under 10,000. Under 10,000 uh. followers, I have like 150 people in there. Okay. Uh. And then the rest, 150 people are... Oh, yes, ah, I yes, also okay. have 150 people ah, about okay. that. But, okay, okay. <laughs> so like yes. 10,000 uh, 10, is like the, the, the medium, I, I guess, there. Uh, or like the medium is probably way, way lower than that. I don't know, like the average. I never calculated that. Um, good. Uh, firstly, good. we are not that many in Twitter, but also we all start there. I also... Now I have... Uh, 18k followers after a lot of tweets uh, same for you by the way su- uh, congratulations yeah. to your okay. success I mean I, <laughs> I know you had like first podcast you were on what was it like 5,000 around that uh, follower mark you were right when we had when we the had the, music- yes yeah in the last I think with the ETF I, I made uh, my, my point and uh, I deep dive on, uh, on I think also one recommendation I do I say and I follow this advice Bitcoin is very multidisciplinary. So, for example, I don't discuss uh, about how to self cast the Bitcoin because I'm not an expert. I don't discuss about Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. What I like the most is store of value. For me, the ETF was really um, a big change, a new era. And so I focus on that and I provide a lot of content on this at a high level because I was following every day all the flows, what people were saying in Twitter, how following with the price, the relationship between financial world, uh, and and uh, people appreciate that I provide uh, some special com- content. So the advice is uh, find your niche, your uh, the area where you like the most, and, and focus on that area if you want to grow your followers. Definitely, there are many valuable people who have a lot of knowledge on Bitcoin, and they have only f- they have not only they have few hundreds uh, of um, followers. And if they find uh, a spot where they provide the unique content, then uh, the, um, the followers will thrive. Also because, as I said before, 
in the next months the price will go up and number uh, num, uh, number go up technology is the number one te- a way to have more followers. In fact, also, I can see also in my followers, when Bitcoin is going, it was going from 40K to 60K, uh, my followers increase much a way, uh, faster way than in the last three months. In the last three months, the price remained more or less stable, but it's like, uh, it feels like 200 years, we are between 66 and 72, and they didn't get so many more new followers, despite uh, posting uh, regularly. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I talked with the, Uh, Bitcoin exchange CEOs. I talked with uh, yeah. the treasure CEO yesterday. I talked with uh, other content creators, and everyone is saying the same thing. Uh, yes. When the price goes sideways, sales go down. Same. Yes. The, when uh, the price goes down or up, like it doesn't matter. The price oh. just has to do something. <laughs> then, 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 <laughs> then, then the actual uh, Bitcoin price goes up. That, that's uh, no, yes. no, no, the, the actual like sales numbers of. Of yes. treasure uh, of of Bitcoin only companies like Twenty One Bitcoin or something like that, they go actually up and do that uh, because of that. And it's just the same with uh, with, with with us uh, content creators because when the price does something, people are like, "Oh, what what is that about?" And yes. they are they are searching on YouTube uh, Bitcoin. Let, and they are more I, on Twitter. Yes, and many they they heard you. They hear they heard your podcast. They know. I think many they are in the sideline, but. Uh, Also, the price improve is not uh, the price increase is not only move people from not listening to listening, but many from not paying attention to paid sideline attention. Once Bitcoin, many maybe they already know your podcast, but they are not listening yet. Once Bitcoin is 80, 90k, they will think, "Oh, I saw Robin's podcast. Let me listen to it." So they are like they pay a, they don't pay active attention, but they and they know you and they will listen to you when Bitcoin will be higher. Hey, uh, one, one small note that I want to do for for the list on 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 Twitter that I have is I only see English people, oh, like there like there are way more Bitcoiners that maybe only do Spanish content or maybe only do French content. Ah, yes, they, they are not in my list. Wait, ah, okay. I, 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 this is just a nuance that I want to give to the list, and it's it's not like there are only three hundred uh, Bitcoiners on, on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that, that, that there is. They are probably like probably like way more than that that I don't even have on, on my radar. Than there are people that talk about Bitcoin oh. but are not really are in the Bitcoin scene and then there are all the other languages because Definitely. English is just 10% of the world. <laughs> yes, but in Bitcoin, uh, most of the literature on Bitcoin is, uh, is in English. Yeah. Is in English. In fact, when I say, I speak also, I, I have also some articles and some uh, videos in Italian for the Italian communities on Austrian School of Economics. But uh, considering also that generally the people who are interested in Bitcoin are or Gen Z or millennials. Uh, they should make the effort, wherever they're coming from, we're coming uh, from the first world. Uh, if they want, they can learn an English enough to, le- to listen to a podcast or to read a book. They don't have to work in English or to live in English. So it will be, it will be great for them if they can uh, also learn English because uh, what it is offered in German or in Italian or in Spanish It's maybe five percent of the literature of what is offered in English. Also, for uh, Austrian School of Economics, there are several books: "The Price of Time," uh, and uh, uh, another is uh, "The Ethics of Money Production," plus other books. I cannot recommend this to the local community because they are only in English, mm-hmm. and um, so uh, we. On one side, yes, we need educators to. Uh, spread in the local language but whoever is interested in new technology, new thing the original language is in English. Then if something is well established since years, then there will be translation in every language uh, but for everything that is new, also the internet when it was new it was mostly in English because it's the lingua franca of uh, our world. Yeah, it's really interesting I actually made the decision like because I am natively German, German Yes, uh, but My girlfriend only speaks English with me. Okay. I speak now with all the guests English. Like 90% of my life is actually now English. Uh, it's sometimes even weird to, for me to speak in German. <laughs> it's like it turned completely the other way around. Uh, and Same for me in Italian sometimes. <laughs> also, some words sound weird in Italian if you translate. So I keep the word in English. Yes, uh, definitely. And, and I uh, made the specific choice to do it in English. Uh, and there was one aspect of it because... The German 
Bitcoin community is really strong. Also, yeah. There are so many great Bitcoin podcasters uh, from the starting point with Nico Yilch, but there are so yeah. many also, uh, 21 other ones. Community 21 and Zeitsprung, they, they are making it, yes. it, it possible that, uh, that we uh, record here. Like the, the German speaking community is really strong. Uh, and then we also have the content creators like Roman Rehe with Block Trainer. We have Sunny Degree. We have other big people. And I just looked at the German market and the English market. And I was like, there are in both markets really strong people in there. So I don't have to fill a hole. Okay, yeah. I, I can just freely choose what, whatever I want to do. And uh, because, uh, if, for example, if there was almost no Bitcoin podcast in German and there was no good content creator in German, I would definitely do it in German. Because then uh, I can provide real value to a really huge community of people. But as it is, there are so many great uh, people. I don't have to be another great person. Though. I can be another great person also in English. It's, 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 it's okay for me. <laughs> in English also, you have the chance to interview many more uh, Bitcoiners in your podcast. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin. Or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing. How to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be spent stored on a hardware wallet, on a self-custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. Yes, way more. Uh, uh, Maybe not even more because there are enough people in German that I can interview a, a lot, but uh, different kind of people. Yes. And like, also, yeah. like even an Italian looks different at Bitcoin than a German. Uh, and uh, an in Indian definitely looks different at Bitcoin than, uh, than, a, than a German. And an American looks different. That, like it's, it's just interesting to have all around the world this, this, this global thing. But let's get uh, back to topic. Like nice. It's actually... I've not been. I've not come to my second question till now. Okay, <laughs> and we are here to help now. <laughs> I, I love it. Um, for the ETFs, uh, a lot of people. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> 30, 32 minutes for one question. <laughs> That's Bitcoin. I don't right? think so, no. <laughs> um, uh, for the ETFs, so the actual question that I had is. Um, we had like Samsung Mao coming out and he said like if, if the Bitcoin ETF comes and it's, it goes crazy I think he said like it can go like in a few weeks really high I don't yes. remember the, the exact number that he said I think literally one million one said. million is like that. wow that, that was really crazy um, and there are a lot of other people that said like when once the Bitcoin ETF hits like we have this huge uptick and then we had like several Yes. Uh, instances before the actual launch with the hack and everything uh, involved in that and, and it would be interesting also to hear your perspective on the on the launch of the Bitcoin ETF mm -hmm. also uh, but are you disappointed with the Bitcoin ETF till now? No, with now so I was till March April uh, was like on track because it was already 70k and now maybe in the I would not have expected to range so long in this uh, 65, 70k for the last uh, three months uh, but uh, the, the best will still come so I'm the shift is there the big change so Bitcoin moved from uh, like in a um, Christmas table in a Christmas evening there is a table for the adults for the older people and, and a table for the children till bit, till the Bitcoin ETF in the financial world Bitcoin was seen, seen like sitting at the children table meaning something different now every financial advisor has to cope with uh, another financial advisor who has a performance with Bitcoin because uh, it's an ETF it's a product the same so they in the financial world is the same as uh, any other asset or is becoming the same maybe one thing on the launch it was very hilarious and strange uh, yeah we will never expect because a few weeks before uh, the launch the SEC said that don't trust anyone else just track the SEC Twitter account 
And then it was the Twitter that was hacked. It was like, oh, what? <laughs> and, and Wien had like two dry runs of a Bitcoin ETF launch. There was like this months before or like one month before where we had... Uh, well, it was a coin desk or some... That yeah, it was, the, yeah, it was some really like a major brand yes, who would, would have been trusted actually. And they're like... Bitcoin ETF yeah, launch approved. And, and we saw an immediate three, uptick three th yeah yes from 27 to 30k then it was like a fake and then it went down yeah and then the next dry run with the day before the actual launch with the the, the hack we had another like huge uptick all of a sudden yes but then when it, the actual launch day it was so weird it was like not that one event now it's launched it's yes. like it got like is it now launched or How do you, that, how did you yeah, see that? Yeah, it was strange. I would not have respect. There's also another, another reason why you shouldn't, we should not trade Bitcoin because in the short term, he does what he wants, he wants, and no one knows. <laughs> so there was, uh, he started the year at 42.3k, and then prior to the launch, he reached 48k. So most of this uh, 15%, 15-17% uh, increase was due to the expectation. So once he was launched, also he stayed uh, stable. And then it went down. We went to 38k in the next three weeks. So that's why every Bitcoin skeptical or detract, the detractor will say the launch was a fail or it doesn't matter. Uh, it's dead. That once again is dead. <laughs> and one of the reasons is uh, because uh, I think already was priced in before. And uh, at one point it was 99.90% sure. And secondly, because uh, this GBTC had six, 600,000 Bitcoin and decided to keep the fee very high, 1.5%. And uh, that, that's why they start to sell even more Bitcoin than when the other were acquiring. And on GPTC, it was kind of controversial because it's also thanks to GPTC that we have the Bitcoin ETF because they, they, put, they went to court against the SEC. And they also when they won this cause is when... Um, Eric Balkunas and James Seifert um, increased their um, likelihood from 50% to 90%. Because also, not only they win in a court, but the SEC didn't appeal. So they kind of uh, said, okay, then we will have to do an ETF. So yeah, the first three weeks was, uh, was weird when it was down, but then it started, then we started GPTC going a bit lower. And they, what was surprising was the flow keep coming after three, four or five weeks. Uh, Eric Balkunas probably is one, the biggest expert of the world in ETF. He was asked uh, how you evaluate, after one and a half months, how you evaluate Bitcoin uh, spot ETF launch from one to 10. And he said 10. N uh, of these 10, nine because it was of the launch, but it was the 10 because after three, four, five weeks, the, um, the flow was still coming high. And that's why we saw from uh, 40 to 73K. We had 73K in uh, early March. And we were all pumped. Okay, we go to 80K, maybe 100K before the halving. And, so. <laughs> and now it's ranging uh, since some months. I think since three months is around 66, uh, 73. I would have expect to break this level earlier. Uh, but I think the reason is uh, many institute, most of the Bitcoin uh, investor in ETF, ETF investor are through, still from retailers. Institution, they know that their windows is open. Now they're paying attention to Bitcoin, but they need to do this due diligence. Uh, insurance funds, pension funds, mutual funds. It's not like a retailer that they think one or two days and then they invest in Bitcoin. So they will take some time. But also this time will not be that much. I think it's measure measurable in months. Uh, so in the second half of 2024, or latest Q1 2025, we will see the real capital of Bitcoin. We had also Gary Cardone, he's also in the financial world, Wall Street, uh, and he's saying the same. He will, they will come and it's not in two or three years. Because uh, before the ETF, they were not even paying attention to Bitcoin. Because uh, it would have been too hard and not possible to buy the real spot Bitcoin. Even Michael Saylor, as a CEO, a visionary CEO, took six months to convince the board as a CEO. Imagine someone in the company thinking on Bitcoin, how much will it take? Will it take maybe 10 years? Uh, but with ETF, the part that is um, accounting, uh, law, uh, tax is all gone because there is nothing, nothing more to investigate because the ETF is a really super, re uh, super regulated product. So if they want to, the, to acquire or to buy, there is no law to be compliant, there is uh, no legal uh, 
and there is no accountability problem, accounting problem, because it's super regulated. But still, it's an, a new asset. So the, I think they will take maybe two, three, four months, and then we will see the real capital uh, on Bitcoin. And I think what will happen uh, will be the move from gradually and then uh, suddenly. At uh, one point, th there will be an inflection point where... Uh, no one at the moment no one wants to be in the first row because is uh, some they can risk their job but at the same time no one no one wants to be in the last row so once it will be agreed that uh, one two three percent in portfolio we will assist at a kind of a bitcoin rush similar to the gold rush 150 years ago in california but it will be much more faster because it's global it's digital everyone has a, a broker account so we are waiting for this Do you have uh, price predictions uh, yourself for like 2024, uh, 2025 for the upcoming uh, bull run uh, where you're like, this should be the, uh, this should be the, like the minimum where like Bitcoin should reach. I mean, it's okay, yes. impossible to say. First yes, of all, like, uh, that's why we're not trading it. Uh, maybe we can even like, uh, when I posted the post, like, oh, what question do you have for Michael Saylor? There were so many people asking me about the power law. <laughs> I did not ask Michael Saylor because yes. uh, I think it's really boring to ask him about the power law because he always mentions like all models will be all, broken. Yes, I, uh, I'm, I'm thinking the same as him. Yes. Uh, so you think like the power law as a model and then it just will break. No, I, I, uh, so, okay, yes, uh, discuss about this. Uh, firstly, it's not clear which price uh, at which the power law will be... Um, Faults will, will not be will be broken. Let's say, because I heard that at the end of the year it can be 90, It should be ninety three thousand. But even if it is three hundred thousand, it's still in the theory. Uh, it's in the model. So if this is the high range, I wonder which is uh, the use of it. For sure, it's a, it's a great theory to see if um, uh, Giovanni found the way to, to see how things develop and the price is developing. But if uh, 93 is the target, 350 is still on the range, uh, there is not real utility. And, uh, is the range uh, also down? Yes, it's, I think one standard deviation down and two standard deviation up. That's why I think the lowest is um, the lower range is, is much smaller than the higher range. What, what, what's the, what's the, uh, do you know also 90,000 90 is, 90, is the target and what's the lowest? Uh, I don't know. I also ask, uh, I, it would be great to have a table at the end of the year, which is the target, uh, lower range and lower range and higher range. So lower limit and higher limit, and then we can track it. Um, but uh, I didn't have any answer so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's also fascinating for me when the, the range is that high. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then yeah, Bitcoin is going up in the long term. Okay, this I yes, I know it already. Yes, because I can also make like oh, end of the year, I guess it's between fifty thousand and and four hundred thousand. Yes, okay, <laughs> like, it will probably be very right. Ninety nine percent. So like, okay, like, let's not discuss about the prediction. Yeah. Firstly, what we say is not a financial advice. <laughs> let's start with that. I think by the end of the year, uh, between one uh, fifty and two hundred. And by the end of next year, uh, four or five hundred thousand. Oh, what I believe, nice. I, I think for all of us, it's really hard to comprehend the amount of capital that uh, it will be flowing in Bitcoin the next 18 months. And we, because uh, once this, the institution have three, also BlackRock has 10 trillion. One percent of BlackRock will be 100 billion in Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and that will be huge. And this is only about BlackRock. We are not talking about mutual funds, pension funds. There are like tens of thousands and trillions where we can take from, maybe one or two percent. And um, on this, this is one side. Second, macroeconomic situation. They will print money. So there will be more and more money. So people will invest more in Bitcoin. Third, supply on Bitcoin in exchange are going down. I think the... Draw the Bitcoin going down from 69 to 16k was also a big cleanup because all the tourists on Bitcoin went away and they were flushed out. Everyone sold a part of the real Bitcoiners who draw who ride the, the curve from 69 to 16k and also from 16 to 30k really were mostly Bitcoiners or hodlers who bought Bitcoin because normal people for no common people they will say oh it's too risky it went down I don't want to think about this so most of Bitcoin are in the hands of Bitcoin hodlers yes so I think if we combine demand supply macroeconomic situation 
we are uh, we are ha- we are having a great setup for an upcoming uh, supply shock. I think at one point it will happen. I assume in the next 18 months, uh, but all the trends indicators are towards to that. I have an interesting question that I talk a lot about uh, on my podcast, or not a lot, but uh, sometimes it comes up. Uh, the question is like, how many bitcoins should someone have? Uh, and for me, it's really interesting because it depends on the various factors, right? Yes. Uh, do you want to retire on your Bitcoin? Uh, I don't drag how many Bitcoin I want because I'm just all in. Uh, but yeah. there, there are some people that are like, oh, I want to have a good portion of Bitcoin. I have, uh, I'm, I'm maybe on the more wealthier side and I can afford stuff. Uh, where, where should I go? Like, uh, like, that Which is, is the limit. Uh, well, like, is, is one Bitcoin the, the North Star? Uh, if I have the possibility, should I aim for 10? Uh, it, it's like 0.1 because with Bitcoin is actually 100 years and we get so scarce and, and everyone wants ah, it. Yes. Like 0.1 Bitcoin is already a lot of money. And it's like, I think if Bitcoin is actually uh, money and adopted by everyone, uh, 0.02 or 0002 is something like that what the average Average. person uh, can have okay so it's like really low how do you see that topic yeah that's true but also now also the average uh, um, net worth of a person if you consider all the countries also is quite low so in the west world we have more so we should not if it depends also where you live let's say in the first world europe us canada australia um they have already more than the average. So I would say one, so one Bitcoin will be a huge thing by the end of the decade if people can reach uh, one Bitcoin. Um, I think if you were not in Bitcoin uh, till now, the window to acquire one Bitcoin uh, is closing and it's closing soon because uh, it's not the middle class or even the middle upper class, if Bitcoin reach 100K or 120K, it will if you don't have anything and also not only um, money on Bitcoin but also knowledge. It will it takes time to convince yourself to to be exposed in Bitcoin. Also, when you start now you have one hundred three percent, but when you started it was maybe three percent, five percent. So considering that the price will be above one hundred k and it's taking time to build a conviction, I think already one Bitcoin will be huge. Uh, like even rich. now with like uh, around the 60, 70,000 range, like how many people have now 60, 70,000 to spare uh, or to, to, uh, yes. to develop? Like even now, like uh, it's really hard to get to one, uh, to one Bitcoin. And if it's like doubles from here, which you can easily do to, till the end of the year, or in like when something or happens, in 12 like months. Even, yeah. even in like one, two months. Or in one year. month. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So you can easily happen not saying it will happen uh, <laughs> but it can easily happen which is interesting and so like even one bitcoin is like this this north star that will be really rare and i think like in the future a whole coin huh? first of will all be... you should never say that you're a whole coin huh? but that will be huge yes uh, yes because uh, not only to s- one thing is to save uh, 1000 1000 euro 100000 to save is a lot but second, also to build the conviction to be very exposed in Bitcoin, it also it takes time. It cannot be done in one month. A person cannot move from uh, not having anything to have seventy uh, percent in Bitcoin. And also, the education, uh, the current education is uh, uh, buy a house, repay the loan uh, as much as fast as possible. But I don't think it's the right thing. So, for sure, buying a house, you avoid the rent. But if buying a house, it brings you so much more uh, costs because it's not only the loan. Once you buy, a, when you own a house, you have the maintenance, the property taxes. Then you spend more money on the house, and also you want many people they want to repay the loan uh, as early as possible. So they they prevent themselves to to invest if they have. Uh, they are maybe uh, I know that also Bitcoin is a lot of owning. But if owning something costs you so much that you cannot invest in Bitcoin, maybe it makes more sense to keep renting. Well, renting, like any, you don't have the risk of any big issue to pay, and no, uh, that you don't have a loan to repay, so you can invest in Bitcoin. And maybe buy a house when your investment in Bitcoin will go, um, will be higher and higher. One option, um, also, I'm not so early in Bitcoin. My average price is uh, around $30,000. 
Uh, but now I am mostly in Bitcoin, so uh, part of savings. Uh, so once Bitcoin reach maybe 200, 300k, uh, maybe I will buy um, an apart- a house or apartment with uh, two Bitcoin. And uh, well, for these two Bitcoin, I paid sixty thousand dollars, and house cost six hundred thousand dollars. So that would be the the big change. I, I love the comparison with real estate and Bitcoin. Because I think real estate people are one of the biggest people and 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 wealth, wealthiest. Uh, wealthiest people that actually will see like oh, Bitcoin is actually like property, uh, and I don't have to search for uh, tenants. Tenant, I, yes. I don't have to, to deal, deal with everything. Yes, and there's so much noisy stuff around real estate that you, you don't want to deal with, and you have to employ someone to care for that. Uh, real estate is a really messy. Thing. It's just like a business. You have to care. It's not an investment. For yeah, me. Yes, it's a business. It's, or yes. So if you, unless you do, you start already with high stakes. You have already five, six, eight apartments. Uh, otherwise, yes, it, it's not to make money. And also because every generation had uh, his um, advantage for some asset. Ten years ago or thirty years ago is when the the houses start to go up. Actually. It's not a coincidence after we have the fiat system because the problem is people are seeing the house as an investment. But if you buy somebody living in Munich, 10 years ago, the house was cost much less. Mm. And so those who bought 10 years ago, they had a great appreciation or also 20 years ago, 25 years ago. But I don't think the price will increase uh, as such in the next 10 years. We have high interest rate uh, and uh, already we see many people... Uh, couples who both studied where uh, 20 years ago they could have afford a, a, a house now they struggle to reach an apartment to buy an apartment so the price of the real estate will not go as high as uh, before and then as you said there is property taxes there are many other uh, things that people are not um, considering another small thing if you buy a house that costs maybe 400,000 you don't pay only this 400,000 if you have an agency you pay 3% to the agency if you uh, the notary cost 10 12 percent so you pay maybe 60,000 on top and you should consider also this money uh, for uh, evaluating uh, and uh, uh, li- later on it, w- it is more and more clear that the house is not anymore as good as it was before and also uh, it will not appreciate that like when I came into the world of business and finances, uh, and I had money to spare and thought like what do I do with that money before I came into Bitcoin I was in stocks okay, but yes. uh, I really was in plans like in 2018-19 to get into real estate Are like okay? I was like I want to buy my first rental property and Bitcoin disrupted that plan okay. <laughs> because I was like like why should like I, I really research deeply like, what does it uh, mean to own a rental property what work do I have to do what do I have to care for uh, and I made all those lists and all those documents and research things and I was like there's a lot of work but yes. I like it more than, than, than stocks and then uh, this Bitcoin thing came along and I was like oh that's actually like property that's actually like prop- digital property that you can own you don't have to have at all and uh, real estate property. You, you can have, have a digital, digital property in cyberspace, uh, and, uh, and I love that comparison. That sure, I think Michael Saylor made it popular. I don't know if someone else uh, said it before, uh, and I, I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Michael Saylor also said uh, several good definitions. Digital uh, one is a digital good overall, but also digital energy because it allows us to save our energy in something that doesn't inflate, so mm-hmm. it's not devaluated. But for sure, yes, you can own Bitcoin and it's scarce. Uh, also, the, the houses that appreciate the most are the, the one on the beach, uh, for example, in Miami or in New York, Manhattan, because it's scarce. And Bitcoin is the ultimate scarcity because it's finite. So that's also great, a great comparison. Absolutely. And um, before we come to slowly to the end routine, uh, yes. I have one more question. How do you personally see inflation rates and, and the macroeconomic sides of things. Is there a metric where you look at that's that's the inflation rate I look at as the hurdle rate? Uh, like For example, I like to look at the S&P 500. I like to look at uh, maybe real estate uh, prices on average at, in, in certain areas. 
is there anything where like that's the inflation rate I, I go to and how do you uh, see more because I think you uh, mentioned it before you want to talk a little bit about the, the macroeconomic side of things yes so I think S&P 500 uh, and the price of the house is the real uh, indicator of inflation so Michael Saylor in the Prague last year made a point on this and in average is between 6-7% per year and this is not because uh, the value is more but because they printed uh, more money Uh, not only stimulus check, but uh, interest on debt and, and all the rest uh, related topic. Um, so I think the real inflation, uh, it's more than uh, the one that the CPI is uh, mentioning. That said also, with the oldest uh, way how we measure inflation, uh, CPI in the 70s or in 80s, it will be much higher. It will be instead of 3%, it will be at 5-6%, uh, also these years. And secondly, also inflation by default is very hard To, um, to really measure because our uh, we, uh, humans have human action we have different desires what we like 10 years ago we don't like now mm -hmm. something that we, was in the bucket 10 years ago is not in the bucket now some things they become more uh, cheaper and they become uh, they become cheaper so it's also by default is there is not really a quantitative number but as, uh, assuming uh, the price of S&P and um, And real estate is around 6-7% per year. And this is all due printing money. And this is something that the common people still are had problem to get it. Now, in the last two years, they many they grasp that there is a problem. Because so far, inflation was 2%, like in the last decade, between 2010 and 2020, inflation was lower. Many, they still believe that 2% inflation is good to stimulate the economy. That is something really nonsense uh, for Austrian School of Economics, but it sounds right because uh, if people, uh, if the state uh, is founding uh, works, uh, then uh, the, the economy will thrive. But in reality, it is not. I, for this, we will need a much, another, it will be a, a different podcast. But so far, inflation was too low. It was hard to convince people. Now, With inflation of six, seven, eight percent, people are seeing they have problem, and they, everyone has a, a problem. But the lower class or the middle low class has even a bigger problem. Firstly, because uh, they don't own any asset, and they they live paycheck to paycheck. And once you don't have any asset uh, and you live paycheck to paycheck, you get hit by inflation completely because very likely your paycheck didn't increase as much as inflation. Also, food uh, food is something uh, that everyone needs. And it, went, it didn't went up only 3% or 4%, but they, people say 20%, 30%. I think everyone is realizing when we go to the supermarket, we pay much more, 20% or 30%. And uh, in the lower or the middle low class, they spend the percentage they spend in food is much higher than the one who have answered. So it's only is bad for everyone and even more for people in the lower middle class. So we move from not understanding that inflation was bad to grasping. The next step is uh, to connect that we have inflation problem because we have monetary problem. And the mo we have monetary problem because the system is broken. So the fiat system is inherently broken. It's broken by default. And this is something that uh, only, still only very few people understand. Whenever you give that, I read uh, several books on Austrian new economics. One thing is uh, we need money comes for barter, come from people choosing what is money. And the first property is scarcity. So the more scarcity is, the better. Gold will not ever been uh, the, uh, the biggest uh, monet, uh, monetary usage in the last 5,000 years if it was not scarce. And uh, now we are having a system where someone can uh, print, not even print money in a machine, but also push, push a button and the money increase by 5 or 10%. So it's a completely discrediting uh, the history. Mm. Every time we print money, it's like we take from the future for the present. So we increase, we improve the present, the short term, at the expense of the future. And every time this money are printed... Um, we create a misallocation. Also, Austrian School of Economics uh, discussed a lot about the bubble bars. So we create, we are now create, we created a bubble of money. We saw, for example, the real estate in the 2000. One of the reasons why in the 90s, 1929 the crisis was there because they 
printed much, a lot of money in the 20s. But uh, in the 1920s, is called the Roaring 20s because they printed like 60% of the money and then uh, this misallocation created a burst. And now we are seeing uh, there is like the genio is already out of the bubble. We have a US who is having revenue of 4.4 trillion per year and the expense of 6.2 trillion, so 1.8 trillion deficit. That's insane. With a debt of 34.7 trillion. If we, ask, if we apply this amount, saying a person is uh, earning 44k thousand and is spending 62,000 per year, and he has a debt of 340,000, we will all think this person is over. He should declare uh, default because he will never make it. Um, but for uh, the state, we say, no, we are keep going. And the only solution is printing more money because uh, making, let assume that we are a politician. What will you do? You cut the spending. One solution will be cut by spending by 1.8 trillion. You cannot cut. Firstly, there are interest on the debt, military, so, um, the security or uh, pension, the healthcare. Uh, this is very hard to cut in such an extent. And secondly, if you say, okay, I will cut the expense by 20%, you will never go. You will never be voted, elected. The other solution is increase even more taxes. And uh, the taxes are really high. And also, if you increase even more, it's not sure that you will get more revenue. Because uh, the higher the taxes, maybe uh, the less the economy is stimulated. So there will be the revenue can also decrease. The other will be to declare default, and they will not declare. The, the only solution, viable solution, will be to print money. So they will keep printing, not because they want to print, but uh, it will be the only way to keep the broken system running. It's, a, it's like... A, a person under drugs that is trying to recover from the drugs, but you don't want to have this recover, and you give him more drugs. So he stays one or two days more. And then other two days, the debt is higher, much higher than uh, 30 years ago. And then you, you give him other drugs to have it, uh, to have it not recover, not to have the pain of recover. So for the short term, it could be a good solution because you don't have the reset, you don't have the recession. But in the long term, it is det detrimental because the, the reset will come uh, harder and harder. So I assume they will keep print printing money. They will change the 2% target inflation. I, heard, I already saw, uh, read some article saying we should have 3 or 4%. Because you cannot bring the inflation anymore at 2%. So at one point, there will be 3 or 4% the target. And then inflation will be keeping going higher. And the big question is, can we cope with uh, multiple years of 8% or 10% inflation? I guess we cannot cope many years. We saw already 8% inflation, what happened to families. Imagine other 8% and then other 8%. Also, considering... The second 8% is already is hitting you more than the first 8%. Because maybe at the beginning you have savings, you can cope with the first 8%. But then in, you, you are less savings, you're already spending more, then you have other 8%. So the effect will be more than double. So I think that, unfortunately, that is what will happen. We will have higher inflation in the next years. We should forget... Uh, Inflation lower than 2%. Yeah, the, the inflation target will inflate. <laughs> yes, yes. Because they ca there is no way, there is no way more. We are in, the setup is in a way that 2% inflation is not uh, reachable anymore. Um, when you look at that whole thing that you just painted, that picture. Yes. And we paint that picture longer out in the future. Um, at some point, we will get to the point where the field system just implodes. Y yes, I, we don't know when, but every field system uh, we discussed also in the first in the first yes. podcast uh, is designed uh, to inflate or to inflate or declaring default. Even the dollar at one point will happen. I know some people are saying in two, three, five years. I don't think we are there. Also because. The dollar is also the global reserve asset, the global reserve currency. So if another country inflates, they want dollars. They don't want Bitcoin because Bitcoin is too new. So they will want dollars. So this will also be in favor of uh, the dollars as a reserve. 
But maybe in 20, 30 years, um, there is the chance that uh, after some years of inflation at 10, 12, 15, 20 percent, um, also here, gradually and then suddenly, at one point it will be very high. Um, this is also going going down in the rabbit hole. Uh, I think we all understood how the fiat system uh, is broken. Absolutely, I, I love it a lot what you're saying, uh, and I resonate a lot with your your messaging also. Um, I think we are coming closer. Unfortunately, my my watch is not working, but I think ah. we're coming closer to the podcast end. Yes, um, and I have one new question that I ask now almost every guest okay. uh, that I did not ask you uh, in the first podcast. Um, and the, the question is what are you currently deeply learning about uh, or really passionate about besides Bitcoin and I also tell you why I'm so passionate about that question because Bitcoiners are really interesting people we are at this conference now we are uh, I don't know how, how good we can see it in the camera, but we are in the middle of the biggest Bitcoin conference yes. in, in Europe right now. There's, like, there's behind us a stage, there's like booths around, and there's people. I already saw like five, six people like standing and, and making pictures of the podcast and looking forward to, to the feedback there. Um, but when you see uh, uh, all those amazing people, you notice that they have amazing things to say. They have really interesting, yes. even outside of Bitcoin. Um, what are you most passionate about and deeply learning about besides Bitcoin and so we can learn from each other no, okay we can learn from, from each other yeah. Uh, yeah so I it made also me in, firstly I this also your question make me also once I said uh, even more to realize that uh, the common people they think that Bitcoin and crypto guys are the same and here we are discussing about the society civilization learning uh, I think what Bitcoin uh, is teaching me and uh, firstly, to to not you don't need to have so much consuming things. Uh, also, I'm not in favor that you should downgrade your life, live really with the basics, but also for sure not luxury things. So you should focus on more on experience, on the spending time with with friends, spending time with family, with uh, your love. And um, this is what it changed me. And also, it pushed you more to self development. So I also restarted again to to learn to read the books or uh, listen to podcasts related to self development. You you see how important is uh, uh, the value of of time. For example, before I was giving uh, less important on time, so I'm trying to use uh, more uh, my time uh, to develop myself. Uh, one thing is uh, sport. Keep me as much as uh, in um, trained as possible because. My health will be first, maybe the biggest asset. Our life is limited. Uh, and second, trying to develop myself as well. Amazing. I love it. And the end routine that you already know, uh, and you were the first podcast guest, actually. I think I took, because I have the end routine, yeah, the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest. Ah, okay. But you're the first guest uh, on my podcast, so I did not have a previous guest before you. Ah, okay. And I think uh, your question came from like my sister or something. I, I don't even remember exactly how I did it. I think my sister gave the question to you. But uh, uh, your question came from uh, Princess Bro uh, Broching from, uh, in Mark and we made it in the last podcast. Uh, and the question is really cool from the previous guest uh, for okay. you. Um, with the medical advancements and with the technical advancements, uh, could you imagine that we uh, could live uh, to be so old that we actually see the last subsidy of Bitcoin in 2140 uh, and we actually live to there be, with all the medical and technical advancement that we might have there. I mean, it's definitely not okay, Bitcoin okay, related yes. as a medical question, but <laughs> <laughs> I will I'm be almost curious. 160 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Uh, several studies saying uh, that whatever we do, uh, there is a cap at 120 years. Oh. And so it's like similar to the supply of Bitcoin is cap. I I think what uh, medical advancement uh, and also now we, we also our choice to keep uh, for food, sleeping, uh, sport and so on can keep us uh, down, uh, degrading less and later. Uh, but after 80 or 90 years old, the likelihood to have... Uh, any pathology, it's quite high. So, I will be for me. It will be 
I don't think we will reach, uh, there will be the chance, the cap is 120, uh, but I would be happy if I arrive at 80, 85 or uh, in a good state considering that age, that I still uh, can do everything by myself. I, uh, I don't think I will, we will have the chance to run. <laughs> it will be good to see the last subsidy of Bitcoin. We will definitely make a podcast then. <laughs> <laughs> It will be a bit slower. Maybe we talk like yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we talk a little slower. <laughs> it, it, it will be like two, three hours long, but no. we, we get uh, only the first ten minutes in there. <laughs> yes. Uh, perfect. Then uh, before I let you go, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions? Where can people uh, see more about you? Uh, yes. So two, uh, firstly, two contacts. In uh, you can find me in X, where I'm very active, especially as Bitcoin as uh, for uh, sponsoring Bitcoin as a store of value. Alessandro Ottaviani, my uh, alias in tweet, tweet in X is uh, Alex Otta BTC. And then we have, uh, uh, with Francesco Madonna, we have, uh, we are hosting uh, the podcast, the store of Bitcoin. Bitcoin as a store of value. You can find uh, in the website, uh, www.storeofbitcoin.com. So in these two. I would also, in my X profile, there is also the link for the website. We have, uh, not only the podcast, but also the article, I, the articles I wrote, the educational video I made it before, plus recommended material. Uh, I have like 20 books recommended, a lot of articles, a lot of um, um, podcasts as well, your podcast as well. And uh, so the material is there. <laughs> If the people are curious, uh, there is plenty of good material to learn from. Amazing. Uh, thank you for being on and for everyone listening and watching. Thank you. Uh, for watching and I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye. Thanks Robin. Thanks to have me. It was really a pleasure. And see you maybe in the next in the third series of Bitcoin. Robin Bitcoin uh, Podcast. I, I love it. Bye bye.